bond discount. If an investor is choosing between two alternatives of similar risk, both yielding 6% interest, the investor would not be better off by choosing one over the other. However, if the bond alternative is offering 5% while the similar risk alternative yields 7%, a rational investor would choose the alternative with the higher rate of return, which is 7%. The business cannot sell the bond at its face value in such a scenario. It would be able to sell it if it offered it at a discount. Let's illustrate. Assume that a business offered to issue a bond that yields 5%, while the interest rate of a similar risk investment is 7%. In order to sell the bond, the business sells it at a discount. So instead of selling it at its face value of $1,000, it sells it for $900 only. In this case, the business collects $900 now to pay the bond's face value at maturity after five years, which is $1,000. So even though the business is paying 5% only, it had rewarded the investor at the end by paying an extra $100. The business pays an annual interest to the bondholder at the end of each year, which is $1,000 times 5%, which is equal to $50 for each of the five years. The company receives $900 and issues to the investor a bond with a face value of $1,000. So we call it issued at a discount. It is usually mentioned in a percent form. So it would be mentioned that it was issued at 90, which means 90% of the bond's value. The entry would be to debit cash for $900 and credit bonds payable with the same amount. From an accounting perspective, and based on accrual accounting, this $100 should be fairly distributed among the periods of benefit. So we will distribute the 100 in our example by using the straight line method for simplicity, although the effective interest method should be used which is usually a topic of an intermediate accounting course. By distributing the $100 over 5 years, the share of each year is $20. So even though the business is paying $50 in cash, it will affect its expenses by the additional $20 as well. So effective interest is equal to the $50 which is paid and the $20 which is going to be paid later. So it is equal to $70. The entry would be to debit interest expense for $70, credit cash for $50 and credit bonds payable for $20. Now the balance of bonds payable is $920. After the second year, the same entry is done again and again and the balance of bonds payable is $940 and so on until the fifth year, where the balance of the bonds payable is $1,000. When it is paid to the bondholder, the following entry is done. Debit bonds payable for $1,000 and credit cash for $1,000. Bonds premium. Now let's assume the opposite. Let's assume that the bond offers an interest of 7% while the investment of similar risk in the market is 5%. A rational investor would certainly choose to invest in the bond. However, the business managers are also rational, so they won't sell the bond for $1,000 and pay 7% interest while they know that the market rate is 5%. So they will sell the bond at a premium, let's say at 110 which means 10% above its face value, which is $1,100. Assume that a business offered to issue a bond that yields 7%, while the interest rate of a similar risk investment is 5%. The business in this case can sell the bond at a premium. So instead of selling it at its face value of $1,000, it could sell it for $1,100. In this case, the business collects $1,100 now to pay its face value at maturity after five years, which is $1,000. So even though the business is paying 7%, it had received from the investor $100 at the beginning 
when it issued the bonds. The business pays an annual interest to the bondholder at the end of each year, which is $1,000 times 7% equal $70 for each of the five years. The company receives $1,100 and issues the investor a bond with a face value of $1,000. So we call it's issued at a premium. The entry would be to debit cash for $1,100 and credit bonds payable with the same amount. From an accounting perspective and based on accrual accounting, this $100 should be fairly distributed among the periods of benefit. So we will distribute the $100 in our example by using the straight line method for simplicity, although also the effective interest method should be used. This is usually also a topic of intermediate accounting course. By distributing the $100 over 5 years, the share of each year is $20. So even though the business is paying $70 in cash, it will affect its expenses by deducting $20 as it is collected in advance in the form of a premium. So the effective interest is equal to the $70 which is paid minus the $20 which is already collected in advance, so it is equal to $50. The entry would be to debit interest expense for $50, debit bonds payable for $20, and credit cash for $70. Now the balance of the bonds payable is $1,080. After the second year, the same entry is done again, and the balance of bonds payable is $1,060. And so on, until the fifth year, where the balance of bonds payable is $1,000. When it is paid to the bondholder, the following entry is done. Debit bonds payable for $1,000 and credit cash for the same amount.